it is an injunction against the strike itself, which means ordering people to stop withholding their labor. Uh, oh, JP. <laughs> to say that lawfully you do not have the freedom to withhold your labor. Uh, that kind of sounds weird. Another big kind of labor story around Palestine is obviously the UAW Local 4811 strike out at the University of California in California, where um, grad workers uh, have been striking for some time in a, in a ULP strike. And uh, the University of California has now twice sought an injunction against the strike. And yesterday, finally, uh, was able to judge judge shop and got a sufficiently anti-labor judge that they were able to see, secure an injunction against the strike, uh, limiting picketing and, and, and such things. And uh, the UAW Local 4811 is saying that uh, on Twitter they released a statement uh, last night uh, saying that the struggle's far from over. Uh, after two failed injunction requests with the PERB, that's kind of like the, you know, so there are multiple systems of labor law in this country. You've got the federal sector, the private sector, the rail labor sector, and then state and municipal uh, governments. And uh, so the PERB is like the California state equivalent of the NLRB. Okay. So. After two failed injunction requests with the PERB, UC has convinced an Orange County Superior Court judge to order UAW Local 4811 to halt our lawful unfair labor practice strike until June 27th. Having twice failed to secure an injunction from the Public Employment Relations Board, PERB, the university to date succeeded in their search for a more favorable outcome. The law is on our side and we are prepared to keep defending our rights. So. It's unclear to me uh, at this time if the uh, UAW local is going to make the decision to um, to uh, go along with the injunction at this time because it, it seems as if this injunction is not just uh, limiting picketing activities, which is something that we're familiar with in Alabama with the Warrior Met strike. You know, they actually banned picketing. Another instance where we did not see these free speech warriors come out. You know, I, I never saw once, uh, you know, Joe Rogan talking about how absurd it is that Alabama coal miners were totally banned from picketing. Uh, in Alabama, never saw that, but that's something that we're familiar with uh, here in Alabama. But apparently, this seems as if uh, it is an injunction against the strike itself, um, <clears throat> which means the government ordering people to uh, to stop withholding their labor. Uh, you know, which is kind of a strange thing that the government feels like it has the authority to do. Uh, oh, creepy! Yeah. <laughs> to say that, to say that, law a little comfy. <laughs> to say that lawfully, you do not have the freedom to withhold your labor. Uh, that kind of sounds weird uh, a little bit, but you know, I, I don't know what they're doing in California. You know, I don't know. Um, but uh, so right now, it's unclear to me if this is uh, if the UIW local 4811 is going to go along with the injunction and, and try to abide by it uh, for the time being while they appeal it, or if they're going to continue basically with the stance that this is an unlawful injunction request and we will win on appeal. And so therefore, we're not going to stop our picketing activities in the meantime. We're not, not going to stop withholding our labor in the meantime. So it's unclear to me uh, because this is so recent, right? I mean, this came out, you know, I mean, yesterday afternoon. And the statement from the union came out, you know, I mean, something like 12 hours ago or, or a little over 12 hours ago. So, you know, I mean, this is a, a very developing story. So it's, it's not clear exactly where this is going to come from. But there has been some, you know, some controversy around this strike uh, with some, you know, quote unquote, rank and file groups criticizing the union, uh, saying that, you know, the strike is not good enough, basically, which is just a super bizarre kind of stance to take publicly uh, as it relates to the only union in the United States right now that is striking for Palestine. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just kind of kind of bonkers to me, uh, accusing your local union leadership of, of corruption and being a business union and and um, all of this kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it is what it is, I suppose. But uh, folks involved in, in those groups, th some of the actions that they were taking were um, actually noted in the granting of the injunction, right? So the judge issued an order granting the injunction and basic, and they laid out some of the reasons why, um, and some of the reasons why were actions that these, uh, that these groups were taking, um, things like, uh, uh, blocking egress and ingress, which is something that the union had, uh, you know, the picketing rules that said not to do that. Um, and you know, there's some, there's some wiggle room there that you can take, uh, but, 
you know, so anyway, it, it seems as if uh, the actions of, of these groups were pretty front and center uh, in the judges ruling against the strike. Um, and so that it's really unfortunate. Obviously, you know, uh, there are going to be judges that are going to be willing to issue injunctions like this regardless. Um, but um, especially when it's not a democratic decision uh, that everybody gets a say over, it's really unfortunate um, that, uh, you know, the actions of some people at least s seemingly uh, led to the judge being more more willing and more apt to issue a ruling like this. So. Uh, Jose, who is uh, Jose, is in California, said that uh, they will meet on it and decide how UC rank and file will do next. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, we'll see what the UAW local decides to do next time or, or next week, uh, and we will um, we'll let you know what happened. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.